This is what we call the Santee Cooper Rig. It works great for catfishing for many reasons. First of all, you're using a circle hook, which when used right will set the hook on itself. The fish picks up the bait and the hook turns in its mouth and you usually have a nice hook set right in the lips of the fish. Um, we, it also uses a peg float to suspend your bait off the bottom. This is the key to the Santee Cooper rig. This peg float you see here suspends the bait off the bottom. That's the main premise of the Santee Cooper rig. Think about a large catfish. It has a large body and how can you make it easier for it to feed? Suspend the bait off the bottom and you're putting the bait right in his face. All they have to do is open their mouth, inhale the bait, turn, and set the hook. Um, I have also found that you get more aggressive takes when you're suspending the bait off the bottom. They will hit multiple times and they will keep hitting until you have the opportunity to apply pressure so the hook sets or they set the hook on themselves. At the end here, we have a figure eight knot. I prefer the figure eight knot to connect to my swivel because the fantastic range of motion it has. This means your bait will move naturally in the current as well as provide minimal resistance when the fish picks up your bait because it moves around so well. One of the main reasons this rig is so effective is because it is designed for use with fresh chunk bait or you could also use it with some live bait. A large catfish's diet consists mostly of fish, not the other things you would catch small, smaller uh, bullhead and catfish on like night crawlers and rotting pieces of meat or chicken livers. Uh, you want to be fishing large fresh bait when you're going for large catfish. First, start with your favorite circle hook of choice. I usually use Eagle Claw Trocar 7-Aught circle hooks. I find that a 7-Aught is a good size for fish anywhere from 4 to 20 pounds, which the largest fish around here are 20 pounds, so that is perfect for me. Um, suit the hook size to the size of the fish you're targeting. Next, you will need a peg float to suspend your bait off the bottom. I'm using a 2-inch peg float. I find that it suspends a 3 or 4-inch piece of chunk bait quite well. If you are going with larger bait, then you are going to need a larger float. And obviously on the end, you will need a swivel. Use a nice strong one because these are strong, big catfish. Another important thing to note is you are going to need to fish this rig with a rather heavy, flat sinker. Um, you're probably going to need at least three ounces if there's any sort of current. And a lot of catfishermen even go up to eight ounces depending on the current. And then you also want a buffer bead so you don't damage your knot with the heavy lead. Your finished rig length is going to be around two feet, so I would cut a roughly three foot section of monofilament or fluorocarbon leader material. I'm using 30 pound mono um, because the biggest fish around here are only about 20 pounds and I like to use the lightest line possible. And this is the best balance of strength and abrasion resistance for my area. You are going to want to attach the leader to the hook with either a snell knot or a polymer knot. Um, the snell knot is supposed to help the hook turn and seeing we are using circle hooks that is important. However, I find the 30 pound leader material doesn't snell as well as heavier lines. So I'm going to go with a polymer knot. To do a polymer knot, fold the end of your line in half insert into the eye of the hook, tie a simple overhand knot, pull that loosely because now you need to send the hook back through the loop and moisten your line normally and then pull tight and that is a basic polymer knot. Obviously, trim off the excess. Now, measure out roughly two feet because that is the length of this rig. To connect the end of the rig to the swivel, we are going to be using a figure eight knot. So, send the end of your rig through one hole on the swivel. And then we're basically going to draw a figure eight with the swivel. There's a loop. And then if you come back around and then 
back through the loop. There you can see why it's called the figure eight because it looks like a figure eight. Pull that tight. And then cut the tag end off once again. I leave a little extra tag end on here because um, when you land a fish and it tightens down, that tag moves a little bit. And then, usually your peg float has a large enough uh, opening that it will slide over the swivel now. Um, if it doesn't, then you would have had to put this peg float on before you tied your swivel on. Either way, insert the peg float. And now this is also important. You want to set your peg float um, two to four inches away from the hook. Um, you can experiment with that. Everybody has a different preference, but that seems to be the general consensus. Um, you need enough room for the fish's mouth to not just latch onto the peg float, but you don't want too long because then your bait is just going, even if it's floating, it's just going to sit on the bottom like that. So you don't want that. I usually go with about two or three inches. Set your peg float. And that is it, a simple and super effective uh, Santee Cooper rig.